This is the third screencast in a series of videos on how to recreate projectile motion. In this screencast I'll show you how to plot a point representing the projectile and also how to plot the path of the motion. Alright, probably the simplest way to do that is just by plotting a point whose coordinates are the horizontal component of the displacement we calculated here and the vertical component of displacement which we calculated here in the last video. Alright, so if I press enter and then I just click on this and get the right tool, sorry, if I click on this slider here you can see the point P going out there. Now it's going to go off the screen pretty quick so our first problem is let's zoom so we can see a whole lot further out to the right. Okay now if I animate okay now the second problem that just occurred there you saw was that our time is way too much for the motion of this particle and the object just went straight down off the screen so let's fix that and um, I'll just double click this one and in its properties here I only want it to go up to its time of flight which we calculated in the last uh, screencast alright so now when we animate the point P will go along its path alright so I've zoomed way too far let's go the other way let's see if we can see the entire motion taking up the width of the screen alright so now what you would normally do to show the path of the motion if you use this method is to turn the trace on alright now this has issues if for instance you change you want to investigate what happens if you change the initial speed as you're changing it you get all this sort of stuff happening so you've got to press control F and let it come back to the beginning and then when you zoom to get the view in it clears the trace each time which is not a bad thing so anyway uh, it's less than perfect but it's, it will do the job alright so I'll just show you some alternatives I'll delete point P press control F to clear the trace alright the second way is to plot the Cartesian equation of the path you can find that equation in any good maths textbook but um, if you want to derive it yourself just start with this equation and this equation and eliminate t and you'll end up with this equation down here alright so if I press enter you can see the path of the motion there and I want to be able to restrict it to just the path of the motion which goes from there down to the x-axis so there's a command in GeoGebra called the function command and this one here what I've done here is I've there's three attributes to the function command the first one is the function that you want it to plot part of and then the second attribute is the starting x value and the third one is the finishing x value so this is like the start and end of your domain so this particular function because I've got uh, these to worry about here and here I have translated the path of the parabola which normally starts from the origin I've translated it to the right by x0 and up y0 alright so press enter and there is the path of the projectile up to the current value of t or sx in this case Okay, as SX grows when you animate, so too will the path of the motion. So you would normally hide FX and then animate and you can see the rest of the projectile's motion working there. I'll just move that back so you can see the entire motion. Alright, and it should stop on the X-axis again.
which it did. Okay, now I like this better because when you move the x0 and y0 values or any slider values, you don't get those problems with the trace. It does have one weakness though, and that is if you look at the original function, it's in, derived in terms of tan. So, of course, what's going to happen when this is 90 degrees? It's going to disappear because tan 90 is undefined. So, one way around that is to make your slider alpha only go up to 89.99 degrees. But then you won't have the capability of seeing what happens when it goes for obtuse angles. Okay, so I will show you the third and final way, which is the best way in my opinion. Alright, so I'll delete fx. Okay, and here's the best way. I picked this up off the JoJoba forum, and it's to use what's the curve function. This has five attributes. The third attribute here is your variable, which the previous two attributes are written in terms of. And then you've got um, the lowest value of t up to the highest value of t, which is going to be my slider time. Now the first attribute is the x expression written in terms of t, so it's a parametric equation for the horizontal component and this is your y expression in terms of t, that's your vertical component of your displacement written in terms of t. So basically all I've done there is taken this equation and replaced where you see the word time with the t and the same for that one for the second vertical component. Alright, so it's going to plot the path. Here it is. And again, it works the same way as before where it grows with the curve, with the, uh, with the time value. And it should end on the x-axis, which it did. Now this one hopefully doesn't disappear when you go to 90 or beyond. And so that's why I like that one better than the other two. Alright, now to get a point on the end of that, just type p equals, um, let's note the name of this parametric curve that we've plotted here. There's the equation working. So it's been defined by the computer as a, parametric curve a. So if you want to get a point at the end of that, just type a, open bracket, and the value of t which you want it to evaluate and I want it right at the end of the point so I'm going to put time in there and press enter and there's your point on the end of your parabola alright so that's my preferred method I learnt that off the forum it's a good advertisement for the forum because you learn some terrific stuff on it okay so that's the end of this video in the next video I'll show you how to make a component diagram for the velocity components of the projectile. Thanks for watching.